everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney and it's day seven of Shark Week. This is Finn because we're Finny and I'm not Finnin. This is my favorite one I've done for the whole week. I'm gonna show you how you can create this fantastic sunset with an awesome, epic apex predator fin coming through. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're gonna have a awesome time. So let's talk about the materials we're gonna be using today to create this gorgeous oceanscape with a fin in it. I have an 11 by 14 canvas board. It's ready to paint. I don't need to do another thing to it. Over here, I have primary yellow, primary magenta, primary blue, a couple little bits of white because I'm gonna use a lot of that, a little tiny bit of black. I'm not gonna use very much for this. And I will treat myself to some gloss glazing liquid if my studio gets hot. So this just helps my paint not dry out so fast and allows me to glaze. Let's put in our horizon line, which to me is one of the most important things about setting any kind of an ocean or waterscape is making sure that our water in the distance appears level. Unless of course we're breaking that rule for artistic decisions, but today we're not. <laughs> so I'm gonna come over here. I've got a mark five inches up the canvas from the bottom. I'm gonna take just my graphite pencil and I'm very, very lightly, cause graphite can bleed through your paint, but just so that I can see it, making a very level horizon line. This tool here is called a T-square and it really helps me make a level line. If I didn't have one of those, believe it or not, the perforations on paper towels are very flat and square. Like whoever makes paper towels squares those little suckers up. So I can use those in a pinch when I don't have my T-square. All right, once I have that, I can start putting in my sky, which is gonna be a lot of fun to do. I'm going to get a number six bright. This is a ruby satin, it's synthetic filaments. It's not gonna pull in too much water and it's firm enough for my heavy bodied paint. And I'm gonna come and I'm gonna add a little yellow and white together. See this right here? Just a little yellow and white. And this is right at the bottom of my sky here. And I'm going to make little diagonal kind of sweeping marks up. Can you see how I'm doing that? coming above my horizon line, and I'll take the yellow just a smidge below it, curving this up. This brush stroke, let's get a little more white on this one. This brush stroke gives energy to the sky and makes you feel the wind as it might be blowing, even though you can't see it. That's something that we can do as artists to help ourselves like show weather or show action that you can't see in a painting is sometimes use things like the directionality of a stroke to help you. A little more white in there, that's a little bright. I don't want this yellow to be too light because I'm gonna be coming back and putting my sun in there, but I need to have this as my first little layer basis. I can take some up a bit now what's fun is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna get my magenta into my yellow. And you'll see this makes kind of a bright orange, right? And I'm gonna come right here and start adding these strokes coming up. And you'll notice like I'll curve up and go long on some and then come back down short. Because I'm using primaries, my colors are not gonna gray out on me. And this is gonna give me a lot of creative leeway to enjoy painting in my sky. And I'm really gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna dip my brush in water, come over and get some more paint. Little yellow, little magenta, blending these two together. This sky is a place that you can play and take some time in you know, if you think about it, skies can be the focus of a painting. Sometimes they're the, the most interesting part of a painting. So it's okay to focus some of your time and attention here. I just keep, maybe over here, I'm gonna get shorter with my orange brush strokes. Not as strong with those. 
coming here. And I want to really, really kind of make sure that, get some white on my brush, that this space between my yellow and the next color is well thought out, right? So this just feels very glowy, doesn't it? I'm going to rinse out my brush a little bit. And now I'm going to come right into my magenta and add a little white. I'm going to be very playful here. Just playing with that color. See, on the edge of my brush, nice curved brush stroke. I'm letting the brush strokes before help me plan it and come up and blend down into it. You can go over what you previously painted with the color that you currently have. If my brush is creeping up, like the paint's creeping up the brush, I can come back to the brush and push it down, adding some more white so that this side is a little more pink. And again, let these two areas blend together. A little pink coming up. There we go, just enjoying that as we're painting it. So you'll see here that as I'm painting, sometimes the canvas like pops through. And that is about how dry my brush is, how stiff my brush is for this heavy body paint, and how much paint is on my brush. So those are things that I will always pay attention to. If I feel like I've taken out too much of my yellow, I can always go right back in, not even rinsing my brush. And look, put back a little of that fire right into that sky. So that's what I mean that this is a sky you can play with a little bit. You can find the balance. You can find what you like, push a color back, push a color in because of the colors we're using. So again, a little white, a little magenta, and I'm still coming here. Just enjoying this brush stroke. This is actually really fun. You might wonder why I didn't do a bigger brush to do the sky even faster. And I could speed through the sky even more with a bigger brush. But what I want are these little delicate strokes. I'm going to move my hair dryer out of the way for the moment because it's kind of in my arm's way. I'm going to just enjoy this. And again, anywhere that you want to put that color, that power in there, just grab the yellow. Look at that. See how you're weaving those together? If I'm not getting coverage, I dip my brush in water back into my paint. Now, if I had a soft filament brush, I'd have to do a dip and drag off because it would pull in too much water. But because this is a stiff synthetic, I don't have to worry about that. That could be a difference of your experience and my experience when we're painting. And I think about that a lot. How is this different for you than it is for me? I've really enjoyed this week. I really enjoyed all these paintings. It's been a lot of fun for me. Now, I want this guy to be a little aqua, so I'm going to take the smallest amount. See how little of the yellow over to my blue? Mixing that around a bit. I might get some white into there. Let's just start finishing off our sky. Pulling that in and down. Now on the blue sky, I like to really, really get into my white, see, with the bead. Maybe come down here and add a couple little strokes to make it interesting and uneven. Just pulling this down. Get a little bead of white. I haven't rinsed my brush. Just pulling that down. Still keeping that brush stroke going. Maybe you put a little of the blue right here. All right. Get some darker blue. really like the color palette 
in this painting. I enjoyed this when I did that three color challenge on the wave. And also I like that, you know, it's so easy to find primary colors in so many paint lines. That this is something you can get from craft bottle paint all the way up to the best pro paints is exciting to me. Because you can paint along with me in exactly the colors that I'm having here. So definitely like doing this. I'm grabbing white as you can see and I'm just increasing the streaks. This is like kind of like how I'm talking about the clouds or whatever's happening. You know, take time in your sky. Enjoy it. Especially with these primaries, you can really, really layer up. I might have lost a little of my yellow, so I'll grab a smidge. So I like that little hint of it. See this sort of marbled loading on my brush? And it's more on this side than this side. Here I come, just holding it in my hand. Flicking back and forth. Just pulling some of that down. See, I'll break into this. The way the sky can break into itself, color itself in different places, right? That's important to represent those things that you might be seeing. I've grabbed a bead of white and a bead of blue. Just enjoying the sky. Really having fun with it. Let's grab another bead of blue, a little bead of white. And there we go. Just having the best time with that. Hopefully you're having a good time too. I'm dipping in water because what I'm noticing is my brush isn't releasing enough paint. I'm loading back up the bead. Come here and back and forth. You can just see my wrist going back and forth, still curving the stroke. Coming down. Now another little thing I can do real quick, I'm gonna rinse, rinse, rinse up my brush. I'm gonna come back to a little of my white and pink just go ahead and in a couple places, see how we're seaming this together? Look what that does. See, just like you did with the yellow, you can come back and create these little fields of color interest in the sky to make it very special. Put some right there, just wherever you feel it's gonna be balanced. Sure, I'm gonna have my little tropical island right here, but I've gotta find a sky that makes me really happy, that's really satisfying to me. You've gotta find your perfect sunset that's satisfying to you. All right, I'm gonna rinse this out all the way, and dry it and put it aside. I'm gonna get a slightly bigger brush for the next bit. I'm gonna actually grab a number 10 bright. So this is a number 10. It's about an inch wide, has an even firmer filament, which I really, really like. Very authoritative. I'm going to actually, see this water is sort of dirty, I'm gonna change it out for clean water. On bright, colorful paintings, change your water often. It will really help you. Um, especially if you're painting uh, with new painters or kids and stuff, change the water often. All right. So my ocean is gonna have some yellow, but it's gonna start out mostly with this intensely bright orange. So I've got my yellow and my magenta here, and I'm going to really try to level my hand because we want that level horizon line using my guiding line that I put in with my T-square. If you really struggle with your arm or hand shaking, it's a good idea to get artist tape so you can have smooth edges, okay? So don't let it stop you from painting. If you've got a lot of tremor and you can't get those lines, just put down the tape. And now I'm gonna go back and forth horizontally. As 
sometimes people have trouble keeping their horizontal lines. They tend to go diagonal like this. And what you can do, if that's the case, is give yourself a couple of the T-square guides to keep that from getting out of hand. So I'm getting a little more pink. I'm going to come here and I'm just back and forth. Look at this, horizontal. Sometimes on the wide of the brush to get some nice big areas in. The ocean for me takes a couple of layers to get this really cool effect and it's worth it. These paints are very transparent which means that there's a beautiful pigment in them but you can see through that pigment easily. I'm going to just come here back and forth. First layer of the water is always fun. I've rinsed out my brush very well. You don't see a lot of pigment in there. Now I'm going to come and get some pink, even a little white. And right here at the seam, I'm going to put that in, a little white, some pink, bring it back here. I'm bringing this up, this pink and white, up to the right hand side of the canvas. I'm going to take it over a couple of spots, more pink. See this? All right. I'm just blending this in but I'm not covering every inch. See this little orange that's peeking through here? That's a good thing. Come over this side and work some of that. Dip my brush a little bit. Get some pink. Get some white. I come from the side. Now, I don't want to take this too far across because I've got to pull my sunset down here. Back and forth. You can pull a few bits of pink here and there. I'm going to come back with some yellow, white, some orange to really define that. All right, so I've gotten all, most of that pink out. You can see that. Now, I want my water to be more aqua than blue, so I'm going to get some yellow, about that much, and pull that into my blue. When I'm real happy with that, I'm going to add some white to it. I'm going to come across here. and I'm going to be seaming these two together. Here we go. Seaming it together. Maybe pull it. Try to so see how I kind of went up with that stroke? What I want to do is I want to pull that over level. Right. Come into here a little bit. Go back and forth. There we go. Blue smidge of yellow. We don't want to make green though. You want it to still be more blue than green. Get some white on there. And here we go. Back and forth. Some white on there. Now I'm working the edge of my canvas, but of course if I was having trouble I could flip this canvas over because canvases move. So don't ever make your body uncomfortable or your mind uncomfortable. Now while I'm letting that have a bit of a dry, I'm rinsing this out really well. You know, get a little of your magenta and yellow and a little white. Make sure that you have 
nice coverage and color out here in this warm part of the ocean. You can get some just yellow going. Can you even seam these two a little bit together? Keep going. Just working. See, this is the edge of my brush. Very lightly. Notice that the thing I'm most paying attention to is the horizontal nature of my stroke and making it uneven. So you see I'll go back, 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 and forward, forward, forward. That's what I'm doing. You can do that too. I want to make a zigging and zagging staircase down the canvas. There we go. And this is a very light color. Look, I can bring this back. See how I'm marrying those into each other? Ah, it went up, so I gotta go over. There we go. Wondering and loving the ripples in water. It is important. A little of my pink. A little white. So you can just pull even a little of this in here. Look at this. Back in here. We're just making sure that these colors are reflecting through. Just a small amount. Make sure it's light. And make sure that it's level. Just brushing it out. You can see me just Imagine you're just feathering, remember feathering? Come into the green. All right, so that gives you a really good reflection from your sky into your water because that what's just here reflects here. That's why you do that. Now while all of this is having a lovely little rest, we're going to put in the basis for our palm trees. Now this is the one place that you may want to add a smidge, a scotch, a small amount of black just to push it back, but mostly you want the overall feeling of these distant palms to be purple. So that's just something to keep in mind. <sighs> to the palm trees. So I'm going to grab this number six bright, right? So number six bright, and I'm going to dip this in my water. I don't need to change my water yet simply because this is going to be the darkest color in my painting. And I'm going to add just a smidge, smidge, see how little, to this paint. This is going to help with the coverage and the depth, but if I go too much, I'm going to lose the color that I'm going for. I'm going to come up about a half inch from the right hand side, and I'm going to come to this is about almost a hand width over here because I gotta leave room for my uh, shark fin and my sun over here. So I'm gonna just wander my little island down. And again, you want this to feel more purple than black. If it gets away from you, just do the purple. If you're having trouble with coverage, interestingly enough, one thing that you can do is that a small amount of white? See how I took it off over here and then add it over here? And that will help you cover. This may take a couple of coats because we're not using black to create the silhouette. And of course, if this was frustrating to you, you could just make it black. It's not going to ruin the painting. I just wanted the painting to have that feeling of being very colorful where it looks like everything is warm and under reflection. I'm going to rinse this out. I know that for my palm trees, I'm going to want a brush that gives me more control. So sometimes it can help me to do a round. This is a number four round. You could also do a small bright, any brush that's going to give you control over your result. So here's my blue. Here's my red, I'm making my deep purple. Need a little black into that, go ahead and add that in. Load up the tip of my brush. 
and I'm going to give myself a little palm trunk coming out. It needs to be thinner up here and thickest at the base. So very light pressure. As I'm coming in, I'll press down and then I'll naturally think it thicken up my trunk. All right, there we go. Just going to paint that in. Again, look, I'm doing that next coat and improving the coverage. Little adjustments that I can be making through my whole painting. All right, let's make a taller palm tree. Now, palm trees are affected by the weather. So the wind blows them, the sea can move them, and so they have a lot of personality. And you wanna make sure that you reflect that in your palm trees, their fronds and the way that they're shaped because that will make them feel more authentic and islandy and make you happier with your painting. So just, again, another coat. As I'm going, I'll just keep offloading the brush painting in my background. And you can see that that's just this deep, deep muted purple. Maybe another tree will go back this way. Not as tall as this guy. Loading up on the tip of my brush. And just brushing down. There we go. And then maybe a short little fellow, kind of over here. but he should be a slightly different height than that one. Just a weird palm tree rule I make for myself. Some blue, some red, a smidge of black, but a smidge it is. I notice this move here, I'm rolling the paint out of my brush and reloading the tip. Another thing you can do, dip your brush in your water and swirl around like this a little bit. This can improve the flow of your brush. Roll off and grab it. And that's how I get really nice fluidity on, on my work. Touching my canvas to make sure that I can rest my hand on it. And I'm going to give myself a palm frond coming back. Maybe one dipping here, another one there. Coming up here. When I'm happy with that, just pull these little lines, see how they're just very streaky? I like my palm fronds to be a little frayed. Not afraid, but frayed. All right, just pulling those in. I know I'll be visiting these a couple of times to create some value scale. That's okay. I'm pulling this up. You can see how I'm streaking these out, bringing them to a tip. I like to think of these as like if you're thinking like uneven bangs. Bringing this here. Don't worry that it might be a little transparent because we're coming with a couple layers. So this is just you getting your thought in, right? Getting your thought in. There we go. Just making sure I got nice room for my fin. You can lay your things over each other, so you'll be okay. That's frond again. Another little frond here. Fronds are fraught with frondiness. Here we go. Let's pull this one out nice and long. Could curve one off here and curve one off here. Because fronds are, they're crazy, right? They go all kinds of places. Just pulling that off, layering that over the front. There we go, layering that over the front. This little guy could have some fronds facing you. Just using the tip of my brush, it creates more of this feathered effect by being just light with it. You can see I'm just light with it. And so, just be 
be light with it. Just on the tip there. Having a good time. This is your tropical vacation. All right. Just loving this. All right. You know, look at your tree. If it feels like it needs anything else, you know, add it in. Does it need to be thicker? Does it need to feel like there's more fronds? You can add them. Okay. Wherever you feel your tree needs more personality, put it in. All right, there we go. Again, your blue, your red, a smidge of your black, rolling it off, thinning it with water, rolling it off. Let's paint the rest of these. Fond to my fronds. Don't fear the frond. I do this all day. <laughs> fronds are fun. Oh no, I feel like this needs to be a whole video. <laughs> Once you have your fronds all in, it's a great time to add some grass. Now, most people, when they want to do grass, they do a thing where they make lines like this. They're a little too thick with the line, and they make what I like to call the crew cut. And then they're not feeling happy with that because they're like, nobody would mow my island. What's happening here? So what you want to do, you want to roll out to the edge of your brush, get a bead just on the tip, and you're going to, just like your fronds, make some grass short and some grass long. You've already done it with your fronds. See how I'm just making my grass exist on my island. It too, like my fronds, has been blown here and there and everywhere. Make some tall. And then some blow back the other way. You're telling some great stories about your island. Don't tell a crew cut story. Unless, I don't know, maybe your island is manicured. Maybe this is like the end of a resort. At a shark sanctuary. I don't know. Maybe your island will have no sharks. That's okay too. I'm putting one in mine, but you don't have to do that. Following the lesson is totally optional. I'm going to add this last coat. You can see I'm brushing this through my island. Adding my last coat. I'm going to rinse this out. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue and my red and I'm going to make a purple. And it's going to be distinctly purple. And I'm going to make just a little bit of shadow. I'm going to come on the tip here. And I'm going to go back and forth. You could get your bright back out again. Whatever brush you're comfortable doing your water techniques with is fine. I think it's just important that the island casts a bit of a shadow into the waterway. And it should be a glazy shadow. See how a lot of the paint coming through is showing through? That's okay. You just want to know that your lighting holds true. Try that out. This is a brilliant time to change your water. So let's take our chalk and just quick place in our fin and our sun. Yes, there's a traceable for this, which of course you're welcome to use for this painting. Tracing is not cheating, it's just an art skill, like drawing, and you can always lose drawing anytime. So I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side of my canvas, and I'm going to pick a place for my sun to be setting, and I'm going to make a little half circle. Then I'm going to come down, it's about three fingers for me from the bottom and make a mark. And I want a fin to come up. I'm wanting it to skip my palm fronds over here. So we're going to arc up, arc up, arc up. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to draw it really, really dark. 
Then I'm going to come down. I'm going to take a bite out. Sharks are identified by their markings and their scars and the things on their fins. And this is my no finning painting because you know what guys? Sharks are using those fins. Don't fin them. They need them. They're a very important part of the shark. And so therefore, don't fin them. The ecology needs sharks. I mean, I don't, you know, want to pet one or anything, but I definitely understand that they need to be in the ocean. Now I'm gonna paint my wakes coming off this beautiful fin. Don't fear the fin! Off this beautiful fin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down and make a little mark where I come back like an S and come down, make a mark where I come back like an S. This is gonna be the wake coming off this big beauty who's swimming through the water here. Because even though this might be a resort island, maybe this was his home first, or her home. Generally, it's probably more likely a girl. So I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna make another little S. See, we're making little wake marks. Let's come off him, S to the right, of the left, and then down and to the left. And then another little wake mark. All right, so when I have that in, then I can put in these other objects on my painting. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint in my sun. Sun's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna grab some just white paint, believe it or not. I haven't even added water, and I'm just gonna paint in this white. The sun is so bright and so hot that actually when you look at it on the horizon, it is often white and everything around it has color. And if you think of it, all the color is in the sun because it comes from there and reflects off everything. And that's how we can see any of this anyways. I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet. This is a number six. I'm gonna get a little of my yellow over to my white. And I'm gonna make a very bright run of reflections coming down here. So I'm gonna come in where the reflections are further away, they're gonna be smaller. Definitely look at me wandering to the left, right? Over to the right, because what the water's rippling and the sun is reflecting on the surface of the water, some of the reflections as you move forward can be longer you can get some more yellow on your brush if you want it. More white as you need it. Generally, I take a couple passes at reflections so that there's a lot of sort of values. The ones up close can be a lot bigger, but see how that brush stroke went up on me? I'm gonna wanna level that out. I'm talking about near glass water with just the slightest surface tension, and so it's important that I don't get a little too crazy. Now, I'm gonna wipe off my brush, and I'm gonna load up some just white. And I'm gonna add just a smidge, and I'm telling you just a smidge of this coming down the painting. See, just a smidge. If I get too crazy, it'll overwhelm it. So just kisses, think of it like this. Kiss, 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 little kisses of white. Kiss, 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 kiss. Sometimes we just kiss the canvas with the paint. You don't necessarily have to like maul it with the paint. That's kind of funny in a shark painting. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna paint in his fin. I'm gonna do some interesting things with that. So we're gonna go back to our purple mixture, which is our red and our blue. You may need to add a smidge of white for coverage. Don't, not too much, All right? And you want something that's gonna paint his whole fin in, her whole fin, whoever's fin, you have to decide. It's your painting. This is layer one anyways. Because sometimes primary colors can be transparent. And that's okay. You've got this handled. You've figured out the deal by now. Paintings and ogres are like layers, or they have layers. By now you've figured out there's some layering in this painting biz. And come here. There we go. Just painting the fin in. And it's gonna need to be like this for a second, and then dry, and then you're gonna do some neat highlights and color tricks to it.
getting my water in this beautiful thin. Just painting this all in. Loving my Shark Week so much. Learning a lot about ecology and marine life. If I was being really accurate, I'd paint a seal over here. Because that's the only reason this guy's here. If I were seals, I'd be really mad at sharks. <laughs> like, seriously mad. I bet they got some feelings. All right. So once I have my fin shape in, and I'm happy with that, I'm going to take my blue and a little red. And the first thing that I'll do, and this is going to be quite light, because I'll come back in a minute with white paint at the very end. I'm going to add the shadow. And I'm going to come along the brush on its edge. And this is how I get the S. See how I just use the natural kind of calligraphy nature of the brush to come here to the move, keeping it flat. And that's how I get that nice shadow. Let's give a couple little shadow wake reflections here. We're going to do a really cool thing where we, maybe, maybe there's one right there. I'm going to. There we go. So now we've got some ripples in the water. I mean, no hate or nothing, but these guys are super sneaky, so you got to show that. They sneak up on you. They're like, we live in the murky depths. We don't really do a lot of water displacement, and we're super aerodynamic. Apex predator. Well designed. All right. Come in here, and it's okay if you want to add a little shadow right here. Just add a little bit for when we come and add the froth. All right, so we're going to let that dry for a second. And while that's drying and having its little moment, let's do a little kind of extra zhuzh on our palm trees. So get your round brush wet, pull out your blue, Pull out your red. I actually like to make it more red in this case than blue. All right, and I'm gonna add a little white to it. See, I'm doing the roll off thing and I'm gonna load up a little bit on my brush. And go ahead and add this second layer. I like to add a little bit along the edge here of color to your grass. And honestly, I think to your palms. You can take this all the way down the water's edge, or you can leave most of the island in shadow. That is up to you. I also like to come and add just a little bit of this. Just a kiss. Again, kiss the canvas. Don't want to maul it, just want to kiss it with this color. See, so we have the deep dark color there, so we're okay. We're not, we're not hurting ourselves with this. We're just finding an extra little bit of story that we can tell. Because even things in shadow have personality, right? This is just an extra little thought you might not have known about silhouettes that you can do to take those silhouette paintings to that next level. And coming up the front of the tree and adding a little highlight, a little highlight. I like to give these guys just a little personality, right? Just feeling fabulous about fronds. I got a little boo boo there. I'm gonna fix it and set my brush really well before it dries and see if I can't. If it's, yep, I can still get it. So sometimes if the layer underneath is dry and you accidentally have a boo-boo, you can erase your paint. You might not know, but you're like, oh, I needed to know that. I did not know I could erase. If the layer underneath is dry and the layer on top is still wet, you can totally erase. And if it's not that, then you can just wait till everything is dry and just paint it out and paint it over. So see, just a nice little little color extra to get pop while you're waiting for your stuff to dry anyways. 
So I think I'm going to actually have to hit that with my hair dryer because it's still not dry. And that's something you can do too. So once that's dry, we can go ahead and paint in the rest of our painting. Now I want to give his fin just a little more depth. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some just magenta. And I like to come up to the front of his fin and do this glaze. with just the magenta. It creates a pop I really like. And some interesting viewer depth that you'll be like, people will really respond to that. Once I have that, I'm gonna make my purple, right, which my dark purple. And I'm just gonna come in and put that second layer on creating the depth of this beautiful little sea being. I think that the scientists that study these animals are such interesting people because they really, really put their well-being at risk. Not just, I mean, mostly not from the animals, but, you know, certainly from diving, which seems pretty dangerous, but cool. I so enjoy watching people do that. All right, here we go. Okay, now that we have his fin beautifully painted in and we're happy with that, we'll rinse this all out really well. I'm gonna do an interesting kind of glaze right here. Now, if your paint's very opaque, you'll need to add glazing medium. Mine isn't, so I should be able to just paint the straight blue. Yep, in between the wake lines. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm creating a shadow, right, that he has. Now, if your paint won't glaze like this, like this is glazing, just add glazing medium to it, and then it will. And that's all you got to do. I'm just darkening this one shade with the glaze and you can see that coming in. That looks really good, right? It gives it, it just gives that feeling that there's something more under the water that you're not seeing, right? Because these guys, the one nice thing that they do is they cast a bit of a shadow. You don't know what we'd do if they didn't do that. <laughs> now I'm gonna use my white to create my water highlights and then we're gonna sign. So I'm gonna load up my brush with the bead on both sides. I'm gonna come here to the edge and I'm gonna make a very small amount of water that's sort of splashing up. And I'm just like just doing little strokes, like edge corner of my brush. And actually this would be him being pretty active because they're pretty water dynamic, but I found I wanted just a little water action for the painting. And then I'm gonna come along my wake and add my white water highlight. You can even come here and between these two. What you're just saying is that the water has some surface reflection, right? Something going on. I'm going to come from the right hand side on this upper one to get the effect that I want. I can't go left to right and still get my um, water reflection exactly as I want it. There we go. Oh my goodness. He is splashy splasher. Splashy splashing. So as long as you're happy with everything, this is a fantastic time to get your signing brush out. I'm gonna use a small detail round. Put your name on this masterpiece. Let's do that. So I've got my small signing brush and I'm gonna dip this in the water and I am actually low on fluid paint, so I'm gonna Swirl this around in my heavy bodied paint, doing that same roll and load this right on the tip. And I'll come here at the edge of this wake. Add 
add my signature. I just try to think about how my signature lives in the painting. That's all. Because I don't want it to take away from the work. But people need to know who made it. So that's an interesting thing that you've got to think about that you're doing. <laughs> that was fantastic. I have really enjoyed doing Shark Week. I know this was a strange journey for some of you, and for some of you, you guys just fanned out. It has been amazing spending time with you on Twitter. It has been amazing seeing all of your Sharktastic Jawsome paintings, and I have just loved it. I'm sure we're gonna do it next year. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and remember, I'm not finning. Sharks need their fins. I'll see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.